we can see a lot of parallels between various historical, not so pleasant moments. Um, maybe, do you want to talk about specifically which ones you had in mind when putting things together? Um, well, in terms of like the, the setup of the show, you know, like Meredith came up with like the culture of the Atrians and you know based it off of the Little Rock, the Little Rock Nine. And you know, the interesting thing about the Atrians is, you know, we can take from a lot of the history of this country and this country, you know, for um, for a country with such vaunted and inclusive ideals, it's had you know its issues with a lot of outs the way it treats outsiders, whether you know, a different race, a different group of immigrants, people of a different sexual preference. You know, the latest being you know the, the Japanese and internment camps, which you know we pull from for our Adrians who live in a similar sort of camp where there's we've established in this country you can never sort of like be other and equal, you know, and so this is the struggle of like trying to integrate, you know, a truly alien group of people into your own culture and seeing how that all plays out. Um, and it's nice to do, we're doing a show about racism without having to do a show about racism. Like we aren't hitting anyone over the head with like a message, like the message is sort of inherent and under yeah. the surface there because hopefully you're just having fun with our characters. And, and so did that contribute to the decision to have Sophia be interested in a female and to add that extra sort of minority group represented? Yeah, I don't think we came from a technical from a place of like, you know, let's see who else we can represent. I think it came from a place of like, you know, the Adrian, you know, have, being able to come up with an alien culture from whole cloth gives you that freedom, you know, to have a different point of view. So what could the point of view be for, you know, or like a cultural thing that our uh, aliens grew up with that the humans don't have and are bound by and one of them is a sexual preference and for Sophia she is you know um, as you said earlier she's not bound by being you know put in a box of you're straight you're gay you're you know that you are open to love who you love um, and so that was the fun thing about coming up with a completely alien culture and seeing how the rest of like you know the rest of the humans who have their own mores and you know norms react to that mm -hmm. right so being that this is you know like your baby and you've created this you put so much work into it how does it feel to have the validation of every week like trending on Twitter and just the fandemonium that ensues it's the, it's the best to get that instant feedback from fans and it's saying earlier that like there are certain plot twists and moments that we love and being able to like it's like we have all our fans sitting in our living room with us like yeah. every week when we're watching it and to get them like to tweet instantly to be like I love that or, oh my god trailer finally kiss underwater like to be able to get that instant feedback is like it's incredible it's very gratifying because we love the show so much and so you know seeing how much they love the show every night and our cast live tweets every single episode every Monday um, so it's been fantastic yeah it's also hugely gratifying to see who else is a fan of your show because William Shatner has like recently started live tweeting every episode and having like these in depth with, like you know back and forth with our cast he's got lots of you know he's got all these amazing like Star Trek insights on like our show and who's violating the prime directive. It's been amazing. So with any of big notes on wardrobe. He's got some yeah, notes on wardrobe. He does. So. You know, which we take very seriously. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. would maybe if the show continues, would you consider having him guest star make an appearance? Consider if he would. If he would do it, we, yeah. A hundred percent. We'd love to have him on the show. Absolutely. I think he'd look great with Atrium Marketing. Yeah. Would you like to, like, maybe formally declare an offer? Like... Not that we wouldn't have to, but uh, Mr. Shatner, anytime you want, to any extent you want, you know, if we see you as an Atrian, but we've also realized that Captain we're flexible. Kirk, we're yeah, flexible, we're flexible, and Captain Kirk did have a history of like, you know, finding other species fairly attractive. <laughs> yeah, We'd love to have you on our show. So what is it that you would like for audiences to take away from watching the show? Because there's so many things you can get out of watching a television show. What what do you hope that they gain from it? You know, I don't think we have like a specific message that, you know, that is our intent for people to, you know, we don't have a lesson we need them to absorb. For us, you know, a lot of the a lot of the dramatic issues, you know, on our show come from come from a real place in history, come from real struggles that people are going through and that just makes the I, we think it makes the storylines connect for people and you know that they are there they're, they're enjoying it that they're living and dying with our characters that's more than we can ask for and also that you just witnessed a truly unique show that is unlike any other show you watched that the atrians are unlike any other alien species you've seen on another show um, that you've sort of absorbed a culture that you don't recognize and I think that is what sets us apart from other shows that might be sort of similar 
with the number of shells that have been caught there, is it hard to create a unique world and keep it consistent going through? Is there a tendency to say, well, we could borrow kind of some of these ideas? So, I mean, there, was, there were a few things that came up in that someone would be like, oh, no, they did that on True Blood. Oh, no, they did that. You know, of course, there are a lot of shows and people yes. create their mythologies and you don't want to repeat, but I think that we had some fantastic writers that many of which were big sci-fi fans, so they came to the room already knowing what the tropes were and um, having their own sort of unique ideas with, you know, the idea that our atriums and their, have their tribes and they each have their own plans and they have their own unique uses, um, that kind of stuff, like the fun stuff that came up in the room when the writers came up with. Okay. That's kind of the downside of the social media, if you make a fake call, oh, you know. know about it instantly. You know about it right away, exactly. <laughs> yeah. they, they can't wait to tell so, you. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, no, I think if anything, it's, it was just the excitement of being able to come up with an alien you know, culture from whole cloth and not having like an existing piece of material that already spelled out the rules to you. It's just our writers going like, and then they do this. And so the only way you're sort of hemmed in is by somebody pointing out like, no, we can't do that. That was on Battlestar. So yeah. there's a lot of they did that on Battlestar. Yeah. <laughs> as a huge Battlestar fan, it was probably me that was saying that. <laughs> as much as I would love to do it.